Hi, in this video, I'm going to be drawing two beams interconnecting and then clip out the intersecting pieces and then add some clips and fasteners. So let's start out with just a construction line. That's seal I N and press enter. And we'll just put a line here. Now I'm going to be using the MetQ utility for steel shapes. You could do this by hand. It's going to take a lot longer. You'd have to create the steel shape in plan view and then extrude it and rotate it. But for the yeah. simplicity of this video and to show you the MetQ tools, I'm going to be selecting the shapes utility. And then I'm going to be selecting this beam here, which is approximately 42 by uh, 13 here. So once I've selected that, it's just a matter of selecting it from the top here. I could select it from the middle. I'm just going to go ahead and just create my beam here. I'm going to give it a, uh, a length of six feet. Okay. So my beam's been created here and I press enter. And now I can create my intersecting beam. I'm going to use the same size, but it could be smaller. If it's smaller, then we're only going to have to clip the top and not the bottom, but I'll show you how to be both the top and bottom. And again, I'm going to come over to my utility here for you draw from the top. And this time I'm going to snap to the midpoint of this beam and do so I'll just type in the MID. Well, we snap to that and then come out of here and I'll come over uh, six feet as well. Enter. So now I've got these two adjoining beams. What I need to do is push this beam into the other. Then I'll need to use a subtract command to remove the top and bottom. I think the easiest way of figuring out the distances really is to uh, make a 2D projection of this model. I'm going to go into my front view, run a command called flat shot. Flatshot is a command available in AutoCAD. Today I'm working in a AutoCAD alternative called AbbeyCAD. All the commands are the same. So this video will apply for both AutoCAD and AbbeyCAD. So I'm going to choose create. Then I'm going to put this up here somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. And I'll press enter three times to scale it and rotate it. Now I can come into my top view and then I'll go ahead and look at this more closely. I'll create a rectangle with the REC command and I'll snap here and here. If I select the rectangle and then just enlarge it slightly so that it clears this intersection here better, go ahead and move it up. And then I'm doing this using the grips. So this side too, an inch. And we'll come back into why I, I need this clearance here. You'll see it once I get into the 3D model again, but I've expanded it by about an inch each way. Now it's just a matter of extruding. We'll select it by typing EXT for extrude. And remember the beam was about 13 inches or so wide. So we're going to extrude it at 13 inches. Next, let me go into a 3D view of this. So let's just go into this view here. And what we need to do is rotate this flat. So we'll pick it, we'll type in ROT and then choose rotate 3D from the list. And we're going to establish this hinge point here at the bottom. And this is going to allow us to flip this on its side like this. Let's go into this view here. We can take this and select it by the corner here. Press the space bar to move it. And then apostrophe Z to zoom on to this area here. And we'll snap it to the corner here. 
So now you can see where I'm clipping. You look closely, you can see that I've overshot it slightly because this beam, I believe, is about 12.5 or so inches. But I do it at 13. Remember when I extruded this? And now we'll just need to copy this down to the bottom in the same way. So we type in the CO command and press L for the last entity created, which is the solid there. And then press enter. And then we'll just copy this down to this corner here. Now I need to go ahead and subtract these pieces from the beam. And to do that, I use the SU command for subtract. I pick the beam. Then I go ahead and I pick these two pieces after pressing enter. And that's going to create the shape I need. Now let's go back into the 2D drawing that I did to figure out how far to move this. So we'll just do a distance command and we'll do a distance from here to here. And you can see 5.485 is the distance that we need to move this beam. So let's select the beam, type the move command, and then with the ortho turned on, which is the F8 key, we'll just type in 5.485. And at the same time, we're pointing it into the direction we need to go. So let's look at the beam or front view. As you can see, it's subtracted this section properly. Now, remember when we added the extra in? This is that inch right here, you can see it. And then the other inch is basically right here, avoiding the radius here of the adjoining beam. So that's where that inch came into play. We just go ahead and start adding a angle clip or clip angle to fasten this beam to the other. Let's go into the isometric view. And we'll look at it from, and I'm just clicking on the corners of this view cube here, to navigate my way around. I want to work in the plane here, looking straight on this way. So in order to do that, I need to rotate my UCS. For some, this is going to be a little bit hard to understand, but essentially what I'm doing is. I'm taking the current UCS, which is the world UCS, where the X is pointing this way and the Y is pointing this way. And I want to rotate the X and the Y so that the X is going this way and the Y is going straight up and down. And the Z is pointed in this direction. To do that, I just use a simple command called UCS. Type in three. And then my first point's going to be here. I want to be careful not to select these endpoints here. So here, and then my second endpoint is going to be somewhere down this way. I really need my polar tracking turned on. So I'm going to come down here to my lower bar here, also called the status bar, and turn that on. And then this way I can properly snap along this axis here. You can see it's snapping at a 90 degree here. So let's left click. And then I'll do the same for this point up here, which is my Y. Now to locate this point, I'll just press my shift key to locate that. And now what you can see is the UCS has rotated itself this way. Now. The next step is viewing this straight on. And the best way of doing that is just to type in the plan command and enter for the current UCS. So that's going to rotate it up this way. For clarity's sake, I'm going to turn off the shade mode, with, which is SA8A. Switch it to wireframe. And again, you can see my X and Y icon down here. And I'm working on this flat plane here currently. Next thing I want to do is just create a short line here 
defining the length of this beam before it starts the radius. But I only want to work on this plane here. I don't want to work beyond or in front. That the Z value could be either a positive or negative. So I want to be working on the Z of zero. And in order to do that, I'll need to use what's called a point filter. And if I start the line command, it's wanting a first point. If I arbitrarily just click here, it could select some point, like I said, in front or behind the plane that I need. So in order to force that, I use the filter dot Z. And then for the Z, I don't want it to move at all. So I just type in zero. And then I can start my line and do a point Z again. I can type zero, click here. So there's a line here, but you can't see it. What I need to do is copy that line. Again, I'll use the L command for the last entity created. I'll just copy this line over so long as it's straight. Let's say 65. So that's going to place a copy this line from this edge here. So now that we have this uh, piece here, let's go ahead and snap to it with the rectangle. The reason why I'm snapping to it is I want to make sure that I'm still on that plane that we established. I'm going to go over um, nine inches, 20 inches. This defines one side of the angle. Let's define the, the other side, which is the side that's pointing straight up at us. So we'll use the object snap tracking and we'll come over half an inch. Now let's go ahead and create some holes in here. So we'll use the C command and we'll snap to the center here. And you come out 0.5 our radius. Now let's go ahead and copy and choose L for last, enter and copy this up five inches, making sure that our orthos are. Let's copy this down five inches while we're still in the copy command. But let's extrude just the left side here, not including the plate on the right. Second EXT. We'll, we'll screw this up half an inch. And we'll do the same to this right side, except we're going to extrude this one up nine and a half inches to accommodate for the thickness. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and subtract these holes from the angle. We'll use the SU command for subtract. We'll pick the main piece, enter, and then we'll pick these circles here. Enter. We can just do the shade command just to check it. We're correct on that. Now let's just isolate these pieces here. Type in lay iso. Let's go ahead and select this by area. We'll type in move command M and we'll step toward the right side of this and type in the ER perpendicular snap to this construction line here. Now we can get rid of the structural lines here and do the lay on ISO. And let's go ahead and view this. But before we view it, we have to reset our UCS, UCS world. And let's look at this from the top. And then we'll look at it from this angle here. Let's go ahead and shade it. Let's look at this from the front. It looks like we need to move it a half an inch to the right here because when we added the thickness, we pushed it back slightly. So what we need to do is just select these pieces here. Let's just isolate this again and 
move these pieces over half an inch. Way nice, so to bring that back. And now when we do it again, it should be correct. So let's go ahead and add the bolts in there real quick. I know this is an extra step, but I just want to show you how you would do that using uh, the net cue, or if you're so inclined, you could create your own 3d bolt, which is a lot of work. Net cue is saving you a ton of time here. So let's go into the front view again and we'll turn off the shade mode for now and come up here to the fast surge utility and we'll select this icon here. And we're going to select the 112. Make sure that this is uh, checked to 3D. We have the washer and nut turned on. And we'll go ahead and start the bolt. And we'll give it the point direction. And then the length between the bolt head and the washer, we're going to say that's about two and a quarter. For the length of the actual bolt itself, we'll just make that overshoot just slightly we'll just type in 3.7 and then we'll do a full thread so we'll type in f for full thread and then that's going to create the 3d bolt for us let's get out of the front view and go back into our view and then come up here we'll select this bolt here that we created and We're going to zoom down on it quite a ways because we want to make sure that we select this from the center. So we're going to just kick it by crossing, kind of M for move, and find your center. See the most outer center of all these. We want the one on the right. We'll left click here. And we'll do an apostrophe Z to try to zoom in here while we're moving. And you can see the center here. So we'll snap it there. And then we're going to copy this up that five inches. Remember the five inches. So we can just take it like this and do the copy command. And we'll go ahead and turn our ortho on and then just copy this up and then 10. So now let's check the front view again. It looks correct. We could move these. I have a layer that I've created with another color. We'll move these to the fastener layer. Now we could fade this. You can see the bolts coming out here on the end. If I do an orbit, the OR command, you'll be able to see the bolts here as well. So I hope this video has been helpful. Feel free to email or call me. The number here is 888-271-7121. And ask me about MetQ or structural tools, the ones I use today, or MetQ in general. We have piping, ducting, and structural, plus the mechanical tool, which I showed you today with the bolts. Also, let me know if you have any questions about CAD in general. Be happy to help. See you in the next video.